Hi, College Algebra students. Welcome to day five of chapter nine. We're working with inequalities in two variables. So today, the big difference of what we're working on is that it's going to be an inequality. So we're going to involve some shading in what we do today. So the solution is a set of an inequality in two variables is a set of all ordered pairs with real coordinates that satisfy the inequality. The graph of the inequality is the graph of the solution set. So for the first two, we're going to graph each linear inequality. So we'll be graphing a line, and then we're going to shade where the solution is. So first thing I want to notice when we look at this 2x minus 3y less than 6, I notice this less than symbol. Right away, that less than symbol shows me that I'm going to have a dashed line. Versus for part b, when I see the greater than or equal to, I know it's going to be a solid line. I like to get that out of the way right away, know that I have my dashed or solid line. Now the next part is just graphing the line. So when you're in, for example, A, you're in standard form. So you could take this and solve for y equals, that will always work. But what I'm going to show today is using your intercepts. So we're going to do our x, y intercepts, which means you plug in 0 for x and then 0 for y. So if I plug 0 for x, this whole term goes away. I'm left with negative 3y less than 6. When I plug that in and I solve, I'll get y is negative 2. And you kind of make it an equation. Do the same thing with y. If this turns to 0, 2x equals 6. Well, that means x is 3. Graph those two points. 3, comma 0, 0, negative 2. I remember from the beginning it should be a dashed line. So connecting those two points, make it a nice dashed line. And we're almost there. The next part is the shading. So once I have the line, I need to figure out my shading above or below. So what I like to do is take a test point. I like to test 0, 0. It always seems to be the easiest. So if I test 0, 0, which means I plug in 0 for x, 0 for y, I'm seeing, is this a true statement? Well, 2 times 0 minus 3 times 0 is 0. Is 0 less than 6? Yes, it is. So that means this is part of the solution and everything next to it. So 0, 0, and everything around it is my answer. Just make it nice and pretty. Take some time and draw the color. And there is your answer for 1a. Let's do the same thing now for 1b. We're going to graph this. Since this is in y equals mx plus b, I know my intercept is 0, 7, and my slope is negative 3. So I'm going to graph it using my slope intercept. So go up to 7. My slope is negative 3, so down 3 over 1. And I just graphed a few points. And since it's greater than or equal to, I'm going to have that solid line. Make sure it connects pretty nicely. There we go. Put little arrows on it. And now I have to figure out where I'm shading. Again, I'm going to choose the point 0, 0 because it's clearly on one side of the graph. And I'm going to see if it's a true fact. Is this a true statement? Well, is 0 greater than or equal to 7? Well, that answer is no. That is not true. So this point and everything over here is not part of the solution, which means I shade to the other side. Okay. So those are our first two graphs with linear inequalities. Next two, we're doing nonlinear inequalities. So first thing you have to do is figure out, well, what is the shape? Well, the first shape here, hopefully you know, is going to be a parabola. And my second shape here is going to be that exponential. So looking at these, we need to find some information about it. First thing is I notice it's less than or equal to, so I'm going to put the word solid. This one's greater than or equal to, so again, I'm going to put the word solid just for myself. Okay, starting out with example A, I know it's a parabola, so I need to find the vertex point. Little reminder, vertex is negative b over 2a will give us the x value. So plugging in, I'll have negative 2 
over 2 times 1. So I'm getting an x value of negative 1. The y value, when I plug it in, I'll plug in negative 1. Got proper parentheses here to find the y value. So negative 1 minus 2 minus 3. I'm sorry, this would be 1. Y equals negative 4. So for me, that's my vertex. We'll put that right in the middle because that's where the graph is going to change shape. So negative 1, negative 4. And I know it's a U shape, but I want to be specific of where does those points fall. So a good point to plug in is 0. So go back to the original equation. If you plug in 0, the Y value would be negative 3. And based on our axes of symmetry, throwing back some old vocab for you, if I plug in 0, it should be the same point if I plug in negative 2 due to that axis of symmetry. It is a solid line, so I'm going to do my solid curve here. And notice that there's some kind of like gap here, and we're not sure what's going to happen. So what I want to make very clear is you want to get all the way to the edge of the graph. Make sure it gets all the way to the end, so when you know where you're shading, it's clear that it's inside or outside. Which brings us to the shading. So we're going to take our test point. Again, 0, 0 is a good one because it's right in the middle. So going back to the original, is this a true statement? If I plug in 0, 0, is 0 less than or equal to negative 3? And that answer is no, it is not. So 0 and anything near it is not the solution. So I'm going to shade outside. Again, enjoy that, color it in, make it very clear. You have your solid parabola and your shading outside. Okay. Next shape here we have is our exponential. It's going to be a solid curve, and then we're going to be shading. So a little reminder, our original graph is 3 to the x. And I'm going to actually make this an equal sign for right now just to really remind us. Going back, our two points that we're guaranteed to have on this exponential is 0, 1, and 3, 1. Oh, no, sorry, and 1, 3. <laughs> That's not going to look right. So 0, 1, 1, 3 are our two points, but this plus 2, which remember a plus 2 tells us go to the left 2. which is going to change our x values to be negative 2 and negative 3, and it keeps the same y values. So let's graph that. Negative 2, 1. Negative 3. Oh, sorry, guys. It should be a negative 1. If you go to left 2 from 0, it goes to negative 2. 1, it goes to negative 1. Negative 2, 1, negative 1, 3. I know it's a solid line. Well, so solid connecting. Like so. And please don't forget your asymptote. Okay, just like we did in the last chapter, the asymptote is y equals 0. We haven't shifted up or down, so it stays right there. Now our shading. So take the point. Now, 0, 0 is a weird point because it's on the asymptote. So I know I'm not going to pick that point. I'm going to pick something very clear over here. Maybe, I don't know, 0, 1. Like something that I can tell right here I'm going to test that point. That's the point, 0, 1. So plug it in. Is 1 greater than or equal to 3 to the 0 plus 2? Is 1 greater than or equal to 3 squared? which is 9. Is 1 greater than or equal to 9? Well, no. So this point and everything over here is not part of the solution. So the solution's on the other side of your exponential. And there's your exponential for part B. Last one we have, if you do an exponential, here's a log. So we're going to take a minute to do this one. We're going to graph it as well as put in our shading. 
So right away, I notice it's y is less than, so it's gonna be a dashed line that's not equal to, and now I need to graph the log. If we remember, if we remember from before, with logs, we have two points. It's gonna be one, zero, and two, one. And we're not moving up or down any. This is just the graph. So I'm going to graph those two. 1, 0, 2, 1. I know it's a dashed line. I'm going to have my asymptote there as well. And then I have my dashed curve. Making it look like a log. Like so. With my shading, just like the previous one, if I pick 0, 0, it's on the asymptote. So that's not a good point to choose. If I choose one zero, that's still not a good point because it's on the graph. So I'm going to pick something just out of the blue. One thing I do want to notice is we can use our properties here. So if I pick the point 2 as x, that might come to our benefit. So I'm going to choose that point right there, 2 comma 0. The reason why I picked it is 0 less than log base 2 of 2. Hopefully you remember log base 2 of 2 is just 1. Is 0 less than 1? Well, yes it is. That means this is a solution and everything near it is the solution. So I'm going to shade all right here. Okay. And that's your inequality. One thing I want to make clear, I'm going to head back to this one actually, everyone. So I'm going to make this one even longer, right? I want to make it all the way off. And I'm not shading anything over here because that's not part of the solution. And it would only be up in this part under there if this was the true area. You never shade on the other side of your asymptote. Okay, that's day five for you. If you have questions, please bring them to class.